Hey guys, as promised, let's get started on our glass painting. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm just gonna cover this up, some paper here, and I got my pane of glass. It's just something from the dollar store. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. And I'm just doing a tiny one for the sake of this video, but usually when I do um, glass painting, you can do it on anything. You can paint on wine glasses, on plates, um, you can paint on big picture frames, which I really like to do. So anyway, you can't really see what happened here. It looks like it kind of discolored the paper, but it just basically gave this glass a little bit of grit. Now, just give that a few minutes to dry. While that's drying, I'm just gonna blab here a little bit. So I just did a very light sketch here of a tiger. Um, it's not very detailed, it's not super detailed, but enough for me to place my glass over and have a stencil. So when you're doing this, you don't have to do anything too advanced. Um, you can make it as complicated, as simple as you want. The point is, make a stencil. So first step, get your glass, spray it. Second step, make a stencil. So this is just still drying here. While that's happening, I'm just gonna show you my paint palette. I have a couple shades of orange, sort of like a neon-y, pinkish, orangey coral sort of color, and a yellow. Um, I'm gonna be mixing all of these to, not all at once, but kind of incorporating that into the body of my tiger here. And uh, purpose of this painting is not to be overly realistic, but who knows what it'll turn out to be. It's always a surprise. So we'll just let that dry. Um, and I'll just show you what kind of spray I used here as well. Um, it's a matte sealer by Krylon. Um, I'm not really picky about the brands or anything. I got that at Walmart. So yes, I uh, hate blabbing on a video, but you know, just trying to kill some time here while this, while this dries. So I'm gonna place that down over my tiger. guys can see that well. While that's placed down, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a couple little pieces of painter's tape and just paint it, um, not paint it, stick it on the edges here so we don't get too much movement. I also put some little flowers on the side. I don't know if I'm going to stick with that, but we'll see what happens. So let's get started. So for my first step, I'm going to put down a little bit of black. I want to create an outline for myself. It's going to be quite important with this. It's always important, but it's going to be very important with this because we're working on glass and we're not always going to have the safety, I guess, of this, of this uh, stencil. So I'm just trying to get the general outline going here of what my picture is. You will notice painting on glass is very different. It's very like smooth and glidey, <laughs> if that's a word. I'm using a very skinny brush too, just because If you use a big fat one, especially if you're doing something like this, it um, can be a little difficult to get your lines precise. So. And I'm actually using dollar store paint here, which I love. I don't love it for everything, but I love it for stuff like this. And I love it for rock paintings. So it looks like our tail is gonna, gonna go off off grid, but it doesn't matter. So you guys can see that there. And I'm just gonna put in a few other choice details, like our 
eye. And I'm treating these things as placeholders. I don't want to lose these things because if I do lose these after, I'm going to have a hard time seeing what's going on and I don't want that. So, okay. Now while that's happening, let's move on to our second step. I'm going to take orange and I'm going to color this in. And I am being I'm going to color this entire thing in with orange. And you're going to notice that this first layer is quite see-through, which is fine. It's actually good, especially if you have more details to your stencil underneath. I do like to freehand as much as possible, so if I don't see the stencil too much, that's fine. If I see it, it's a bonus. I'm just filling this in. See all the strokiness, strokiness, all the strokes in this, and you'll notice um, this is where putting down that spray, that first layer of spray, was very, very helpful because it helps allow this paint to stick on the glass. You'll notice if you've tried painting without putting the spray down. Um, it's a bit of a pain because it just feels like liquid continuously keeps moving around. Uh, and it's not really going to like stick. So there, we got that. Let's give that a few, few seconds, hopefully, <laughs> to dry. move on to the next thing. So, while that's happening, I'm going to put on another layer of paint. I'm going to work with this bright orange here, and I'm just, I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm going to have certain places where I want to put it. So, I am laying it on pretty, a little thicker. Hoping this will be a quicker video, but if it's not, we can do it in parts, like we've done in the past. Um, Again, my rule for anybody who's painting, whether it is beginner or you're super advanced, is it's not about speed, it's about quality. Some people are about speed, but for me personally, always about quality. You want to be, you want to love what you do, and if you get so good at it that you can do it in two seconds, awesome. If you are a person who just needs to take a ton of time but you still end up coming out with something amazing and that's well done and that you feel proud of then that's amazing too that's awesome and the point is is loving the art that you do and being having that self-satisfaction with it This, you know, if you're somebody who paints on canvas or even rocks, you're going to notice this paint just applies differently and it's fine. It's just a part of this form of artwork. You'll even notice I'm painting the style of the way that I'm laying down the acrylic paint is different than it was um, with past paintings. Just going to give that a little bit there. I don't know if this helps, but just waving my hand over it, hoping it'll dry. Just blow on it a little bit. So while that's happening, I'm just checking out my colors here. I might move on to more of this um, sort of coral color. I'm going to mix it up with a little bit of this orange. I don't want it to be completely coral. I just want, I want different hues of orange going on here. And that's why I'm using things like colors like coral to mix here. 
so that you can get a little bit of variety happening. So I'm going to just go back in and put down another layer here. down and again if you don't want to be too heavy with your hand when you're doing this reason why is because this paint already likes to move around on the glass and we don't want too much movement we just want that paint to lay down the best that it can so finding certain places where I want to see this deeper sort of orangey reddish color happening, corally color. And you can be creative with it. I'm just picking some random places to place it. Put a little bit on the tail here. This is just because with our final image, I don't want to see a totally um, sort of uniform color. It's just, in my opinion, it just gets a little boring. So I'm going to let that dry. While that's happening, part of the process is we're going to use our matte spray again. And as this dries, we're going to put another layer of matte spray over it. So this is a part of the process too, just continually spraying the paint that's on the glass and allowing it to sort of have a protection over it. So this way, every time you lay down more wet paint, it's not just going to keep moving around the paint that you've already laid down. I actually have this hilarious little tool that I use to help dry stuff. I'll I'm going to go grab it while this is drying. Yes, it's this funny giraffe fan that I got from Dollar Store. And you know what? Spraying more of my spray over top. And we will. Spray it and keep fanning it. You guys don't have to use something hilarious looking like this. You can just use good old patience and wait. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I lied. I'm not grabbing a skinny brush. I'm going to add more colors into that body. I want to do my stripes on my tiger last. So I'm going to work, work more on this. So I'm going to use my orange, and this time I'm mixing it with yellow. If you guys want, you can follow along with me if you're doing a tiger too. If you're not, no problem. You guys can do whatever you want. So I've just mixed up a orangey yellow color, which I'm going to be also placing throughout here. And I'm 
dabbing this paint down so you can see so much more texture. It's very different than painting on a rock to where you know there's some level of absorbing happening. This glass is not absorbing anything. So really gives a different effect. The cool thing is when you shine it um, you know into the daylight afterwards once the painting is done. It's just so cool. It's just worth a little bit of that into the tail. And you know, all of this might not make any sense right now, but it does. It comes together. It really does. Going back in with my sort of corally color, and I'm going to pick some places for that that I want. And you know, this is what I like to call like the careless part of the painting, because you don't have to be so too overly picky about anything. You can kind of be creative in terms of what kind of colors and things you want to do. and. Yeah, you're not going to pay like grave consequences for it. It's not a big deal. Just a little, have a little room there to be, be more creative. So, and I'm just mixing, putting in orange over here, just where the face is going to be. And as I'm layering this paint on, I'm going to do more just sort of dabbing it in there this isn't dabbing like we did on those other paintings where you're being super heavy-handed this is very light you're just kind of you know lightly spackling it if you want to call it something like that I'm just going to keep choosing my different hues, so you'll notice as I'm laying the paint down, it's not the same same uh, orange every time. Sometimes it's the coral, sometimes it's the yellow, sometimes it's two of those colors mixed together. I'm just basically trying to get different colors represented in here. I said this might not completely make sense right now, but I promise you it will. So I'll let it sit for now. that's doing that see the issue with this is painting doesn't take long it's the patience of waiting for it to dry that's where we get the saying of waiting for paint to dry all right so using my skinny brush here and I'm going to some tiger stripes. You know, a little more 
more careful here because trying to kind of line those lines up. Choose like a midpoint here. Can lock it down. I'm going in with my paint brush every single time trying to make sure that I get like a whole new set of paint on it so I'm not so these lines that I'm doing turn out crisp as possible I find the more paint you have on it the more crispy they turn out And I don't want to be overly perfect with the way that I'm drawing them. So I don't think any tiger has that perfect of lines going on. So I'm just doing these more as placeholders right now. I will work on getting them looking nicer afterwards. By nicer, I mean having a little more character to them than just being lines. So I'll just keep working down this downward pattern. Doing stuff like this is just like super tedious. That's why I like the careless part of it that I was doing before. <laughs> Didn't require as much 